friend, it's me, Stephanie, aka Miss Bubbles, and today I have a very special collab for you. JRPGs can be so freaking messy to get into, and that's why Taylor from The Gaming Shelf and I decided to combine 10 of the best beginner-friendly JRPGs that you can play right now. There will be 5 games listed in this video and another 5 that you can find on his channel. I will be giving away a $20 eShop card that works on the North American region. All you have to do is stick around till the end and let me and Taylor know what is your favorite beginner-friendly JRPG. For some reason, I always felt very intimidated playing any game that had the word mana attached to it. I think it's because it was something new to me and a JRPG which I usually run away from. However, I recently learned that you can ride a freaking turtle in the Trials of Mana and I was like, what? I need to get this. Jokes aside, I checked a few reviews and saw the kind of game that I can totally enjoy just waiting for me to buy on the eShop. This is a 3D remake of the 1995 original Trials of Mana and you start by choosing your party of three and this is a very important step. Every character will have their own story and combat style so you need to form a party you are comfortable with. I personally went with Hawkeye, Reese, and Shawit. Nah, her name is Charlotte, but she speaks a little bit weird. The game will start with the first character that you choose and slowly the other two members will be introduced to you so you can add them to your party. The stories are very intriguing, engaging, and they can get a little bit dark. So if you are into this kind of like more complex storytelling, you can definitely find it in the Trials of Mana. The world is beautiful to explore. I love the vibrant colors and charm to it. The graphics are not bad at all. The music is mesmerizing and and that is something that I'm pretty picky about. I'm picky about food as well, but music and games is very important to me. Trials of Mana has an action life combat, which is always a welcome feature. You can choose your equipment, upgrade them, explore new towns, and go on quests. Really, it has every element that makes my heart happy, and it makes me very engaged and immersed in a game. You can switch between your party members, and that will let you play around with their own unique abilities. Nothing was difficult or confusing, enemies were fun to beat, and the grind level was not nothing too crazy. If I can pick up this game, play it, have fun with it, I'm sure everybody and their mother can do. I'm a total noob in the JRPG genre and I've been trying to get into it, so if you're like me, definitely try Trials of Mana. All right, Taylor, the JRPG legend, what's your pick? Hey everyone, my name is Taylor and I have a channel called The Gaming Shelf where I primarily talk about Japanese role-playing games. Everything from lists to reviews on the latest releases. If you enjoy JRPGs, I would love it if you came and checked out my channel. Now on to my first game, Final Fantasy IX Remastered. In terms of great JRPGs for beginners, I chose Final Fantasy IX Remastered because I felt like this was the perfect representation of the Final Fantasy series on a whole, and the remastered version just has so many great additions that the original release just didn't have. In the game, you mainly play as Zidane, a thief who's a part of the Tantalus Theater troupe. They travel across the world performing plays. In the opening chapter of the game, you plan on kidnapping the princess, but in an unexpected twist, she's willing to come with you. Her mother is planning something sinister, and from here, the adventure begins. Throughout the game, you travel across the wonderfully charming medieval world full of incredible characters. They all have such unique quirks and big personalities that you'll certainly have your favorites by the end. My personal favorite, Vivi, has a heartbreaking yet inspiring story of finding his purpose. He might honestly be my favorite character in all of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy IX has a fairly straightforward turn-based combat system where each character has their assigned role, like a thief, black mage, or knight. If it feels a little slow or difficult, here's where the remastered enhancements come in. Some of the new features include a fast-forward option, turning off random encounters, every hit doing 9,999 damage, and much more. So if you're coming into this game for the first time, you can really tailor the experience to your liking. Something else I can't forget to mention is composer Nobu Uematsu's incredible soundtrack. There are so many fantastic, melodic tunes that will stick in your head well past your time playing the game. Some of my favorites include the Jolly Zidane's theme, the relaxing Frontier Village Dolly, and in my opinion, the best rendition of the series' victory fanfare. If you're new to Japanese role-playing games and have never played a Final Fantasy game before, then Final Fantasy IX Remastered is the perfect place to start. Fire Emblem Three Houses is the one and only tactical game that I've ever played. This one took me by surprise, I had absolutely no intention of buying it, but the second that I learned that it has some slice of life elements added to it, I ran to game store when I was living in the UK and I just... I had to get my hands on it. You start by picking one of the three houses, each with their own characters, party members, and story. However, you play as their professor, Byleth, which can be a male or a female. 
the three houses are actually competing and I won't tell you why because that would be spoiler territory and we don't do spoilers here. Gameplay is pretty different and it is the thing that caught me off guard. You will play most of your time either on the battlefield or at the campus slash monastery. In the monastery you have a calendar in which you choose what you want to do on your days off so you can choose to have a chill day, fish and plant or you can choose to have a meal with your favorite students so you can get closer together. You can even go ahead and train them. The closer that you will get with your students, the more attached you will be to them. Not only will you learn what their backstory is, some have very dark stories, others have quirky ones, but you will also become stronger together on the battlefield and you will learn what they like and dislike. And I must say, I love the life sim element of this game. So for me, when a title combines life sim into another genre, I will have to buy the game. And I never thought that a tactical JRPG can ever do this. And and Fire Emblem Three Houses does this in an excellent way. The tactical aspect was not very scary for me, but of course, just like any other game, it will gradually get more difficult. You can choose your difficulty level, which is always a welcome feature for me. You can either go with the easier route or you can go with the other mode that I totally forgot what it was called, but if a member dies on the field, then they're dead forever for that play session. I'm someone who gets so attached to my characters, so I was like, nope, we're gonna go with the easy part. I will let you know that the graphics are not the best on this one. They are pretty much PS3 graphics at the most. You can fight me and say otherwise, but I just sell you the things just the way they are. But of course, that did not stop me from playing to my heart's content. Every house is about 50 to 60 hours long, so you have so much to do. So yeah, if you're looking for a beginner-friendly JRPG, why not try Fire Emblem Three Houses? A licensed game based on an anime might seem like a weird recommendation for a beginner JRPG, but hear me out. Fairy Tale has a number of things going for it that I think make it a great candidate for this list. For one, it has a nice anime art style. If you're new to JRPGs, then this type of art style is something you'll have to get used to because so many other JRPGs will look like this. Next, I think it has a fantastic turn-based combat system that's fairly easy to get into. You can have up to five characters in battle at any given time, all with unique movesets. And because there's so many playable characters, it's fun to mix and match to see who you like best. Difficulty-wise, Fairy Tale is also relatively easy. If you're just getting into JRPGs, this is a great way to get used to the systems you're likely to see in other games in the genre without too much frustration. Fairy Tale is also really great at letting you know where to go next in the story or for side quests. I've heard from people who have never played RPGs before that the worlds can be so big that it can be hard to know where you're supposed to go next. Fairy Tale always has an indicator on the map or in your menu so you'll never get lost. The environments themselves are also fairly small so you're not likely to lose your way. Another complaint I've heard from new RPG players is that the game can sometimes feel too long and they just can't finish them. Fairy Tale is relatively short, clocking in at around 20 hours. The nice thing about Fairy Tale though is that there's plenty of extra content to dive into if you enjoy the game and want more out of it, like leveling up the guild house and going on tons of side quests. I think a hidden bonus with Fairy Tale is that someone may have seen the anime before but never played a JRPG. This is potentially a great gateway game as you'll be familiar with the cast of characters. If not, the characters are all fantastic with big personalities. My personal favorite is the mascot character Happy. He's always smiling, energetic, and puts you in a good mood. Anime and JRPGs are both notorious for their tropey characters, so the cast of Fairy Tale can be really helpful for a beginner to learn about the different kinds of characters you might encounter in other games. Fairy Tale probably isn't a game a lot of you expected to be here, but I feel like it has a lot going for it design-wise that make it a very friendly game for JRPG beginners. Nino Kuni 2 was the first JRPG that I played and I actually enjoyed. I was just so intrigued by how cute the characters looked, I just had to buy it. You play as King Evan, who was overthrown from his throne, see what I did there? And he is on a quest to unite nations so that a new kingdom can rise to defeat the dark forces. I really loved the characters, they were all quirky and weird in their own way, and their personalities are kind of exaggerated at times, and that made it really funny. The world is super cute, beautiful, and massive and the characters will change into chibi or shibi form. I don't know how to spell that thing, so you can go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Gameplay, however, is the core of this and it mixes different mechanics into one. I know that many people complain about this and they think that level 5 should have just stuck to one kind of core gameplay style, but to me, this was a breath of fresh air, especially as someone who was new to JRPGs and has tried so many before and couldn't get into them. So basically, you need to rebuild a kingdom and this covers the management mechanic of the game. You also participate in strategic 
magic army combat to conquer hordes of enemies. In addition, you collect familiars, which are kind of like Pokemon in their own way, and they let you find more secrets hidden around the world, as well as guide you differently in battle. Combat is amazing, it feels so smooth and nice, and you can switch between your party members and every one of them will have their own unique weapons as well as abilities. Some of them will use swords, others might like guns or even bows. And I love how this is real-time action combat because I'm a total noob with turn-based combat. I really believe this is a great JRPG for a newbie. Like me. I wish I can go more in-depth into it, but we don't have much time but I really recommend that you buy it. And in September, the game is releasing on the Nintendo Switch, so you can pick up this game and just play it on the go. Which of these games have you tried or will try? And if you have any other recommendations, feel free to let me know and that will grant you an entry into our giveaway. Don't forget to check the pinned comment so you can see the other five games over at Taylor's channel, The Gaming Shelf. It's a beautiful day to play a JRPG. As always, stay bubbly, stay positive, and I will see See you in the next one. Bye!